Hi everyone. Today we're going to do um, an action tiger in the ink and our water pen. So today we're going to do an action tiger and we're going to work on the face first as we sort of sketch the place where we want it to be. And we're just going to lay out a little area, marking our page like this with a few simple lines to start the gesture. So I'm going to work on the initial idea of the tiger first for his head and then we're going to move into the body form. Okay, so there's our gesture. This is the very beginning. And we will develop it now from here as we flesh it out. As you know, I always start with simple ideas first, the simple shape, and then build up from there. As we begin to build up the form, you want to make sure that you have your proportions to begin with. So that's why we just barely hit the page with the idea of what we want. Now, if I'm going to make a growling or snarling, roaring tiger, we want to make sure we understand what's going on here. The face is going to scrunch up around the nose, so we're going to see a lot of contraction of the facial muscles. And I'm just going to quickly plot in some of those initial ideas. The mouth will be drawn back. And... The muzzle will be contracted on both sides. Okay. And the brow will be contracted downward. You'll also get a gathering of the skin up and around the nose, top of the nose. Okay. So I lay in a few lines right here to begin with. And more evidence of the zygomatic arch of the cheekbone and the mouth. Okay. Also, you may notice that when tigers get really upset, they will they're because they're contracting and drawing back their face, the mane will actually appear larger. It's going to spread out because of the muscles flaring the hair out. Okay. And now the brow will be drawn down. So we want to make sure and the cheek muscles will be drawn back, and the eyes will be upswept slightly. So we're going to get all of that. We're going to get over the form here. Hope I don't get in the way of the camera. This camera is sitting right in front of my face, so I have to be very careful, make sure I can see what I'm doing. That's a good start. Okay, now I'm going to work my way out a little more. Start to pull out that pattern as well as the form. And this is where it can get tricky because we want to emphasize there's a lot of facial contraction and patterning, but we don't want to clutter it up because then the ink drawing will get messy and it will defeat the purpose of the gesture. See, now we're building that form, the shape of that forehead. 
top of the head, just like that. And drawing back some of that hair because it's all flared up now. Trying to get the hairs to come together. They're a little bit separated. Using a blotter, you can't see, but I'm trying to get the, uh, the hairs on the pen to group together, especially when I'm doing the eye. I don't want it separating too much. Tigers and big cats, like lions, they have oval eyes, eye pupils. They do not have slits like house cats. I want to make sure we get that. They have black tipped ears with a white spot on the back of the ears, and since this guy's upset, we have his ears turned away from the front so you could see the back of the ears. Okay. around implying that shape of that muzzle like like two golf balls like a golf ball see that round wrapping around that form implied form they also have a black lining on their lips so we'll get that in and then I'm going to drop in the teeth here Usually there's about six teeth up here in the front, not counting the giant canines. Get these little incisors, and then the big ones. All right, now before I get too carried away with all the details, I am going to open that jaw just a bit more. Just feels like it needs to be really expressive. Okay. They also have some interesting eye patterns. Very different. Every tiger has a different eye pattern. Very unique to his own. No two tigers have the same exact pot pattern. Just like a whale's tail is the thumbprint of the whale, so to speak, so tigers have different facial patterns that biologists recognize and are able to identify tigers they track year after year. And these are the chevrons that come down around the head and the face. Now, I'm going to work with that mouth just a little bit. And now I'm going to go drop some patterns in on the shoulder. Now, we haven't developed the back part yet, but we will. This is the neck. So the stripes come around that neck. It's interesting. Leopards have stripes on their abdomen, and tigers have spots as it gets close to the abdomen. Basically what it is is these stripes begin to break up and they start to look like spots. So the patterns change a little bit as it gets underneath the animal. Now we have to imply here that this is round, this forearm as it comes towards us. It's rounded, okay? It's like a tube shape coming towards us. 
So when we lay the stripes on, we want to em emphasize the roundness of that forearm as it comes towards us in space and wraps underneath the animal. Underneath, yeah. He looks a little bit underdone. That's okay. We're going to fill him out. Now you want to be careful. Remember, it's a form you're implying. So the shoulder muscles, we've got the scapula, the shoulder blade that comes down. And these stripes are wrapping around and under that shoulder. The chevrons, sort of like the uh, rank on his on his shoulder comes down you might see a few of those and it's going to wrap around the forearm it's going to wrap like a rubber band around that arm these stripes okay they don't have stripes going down the entire forearm especially siberian tigers bengal tigers their stripes drop a little heavier and a little longer but siberian tigers no their th stripes are thinner on the arm. Okay, we're dropping behind that shoulder. We're going to drop around that form. And underneath the belly there. So we're foreshortening. It's going to look a little crowded, so we don't want to draw every single stripe. We want to imply that this is a form wrapping around and underneath towards that abdomen. Okay, now we got this knee, and in that knee, this is the, he's actually sitting on his haunch, so the femur is behind there, comes up, and then there's the knee, and then we got the tibia and fibula coming forward towards us. So we have to show, to some degree, that there is a fold in that skin wrapping around and underneath. Coming towards us along the side plane and across the front plane of that leg. There, see. There we are. Let me get the belly. Now, let's get that, that crazy tail in. As it moves towards us and wraps around, we're going to start to see the bands of that tail come around towards us. As, and then, like that, see? Getting the shape of that tail. All right. Now I'm going to come in here with some shadowing, just a little, because we're going to come over this with a water brush. So we're establishing a little bit of those plane changes underneath the shoulder, across the front of the chest, dropping down behind the rib cage and behind the shoulder, and through the pelvis, where that flank is, and along the side plane the leg. See that? Okay. Okay. There. Okay, now let's come in for the fun part. For the, the wash. The ink wash. Oh, excuse me. I have to do one more thing. I need to bring in a little bit of a little more ink here. This is going to be around the eye. The eye is white, and underneath the eye is white. And then the rest of it's going to be a little bit of a darker pattern on the T-zone T of the face. So this is where the darkest pattern of the face is, right here, and along the nose, and underneath the eye. Not directly underneath, because there's a white patch there, but along the zygomatic arch of the cheekbone. 
there will be a darker pattern. Yeah. And then it lightens up around towards the top of the head. Now be sure you have a paper towel handy to grab the extra water off your brush if it starts to get too messy. I'm going to come back and do the mouth interior a little bit later. I'm just going to lay a little something in here, maybe see how much it needs. And we're going to leave that white rough on that collar there, that neck, where some of that white will have to come through because that is the rough of the collar, the, the mane, so to speak. Okay, coming underneath to establish the shadows. See, now we're going to pull, pull. Squeeze that brush. Pull some of that ink down. Don't make it too messy. Just try to grab it with your paper towel. Coming across the top of the shoulder with some shadow because his head is casting shadow there too, see. Okay. And at the break of the wrist, where it turns away in space, we're going to put a little more shadow there. Since he is a tiger and not a zebra, we have to make sure we get those suggestions of that orange color, not color, but that tone, that value down the arm. Okay. Leading to their white paws. See, so we leave some of that white suggestion. See the plane change across that front of that foot? Okay. Side plane of the rib cage. Top line of the back coming through. Oh, look at that. Now we move across there. And we allow some of that white through to show the upper part of the rib cage where the sun would be hitting it. And then we come around carefully on that side plane where it's not getting that direct sunlight. Now we move into the belly. We want to grab as much ink off of there because it's white underneath that belly. So we don't want to lose that idea that there's white. Look at that. That works nicely. Uh -huh. Letting some of that shadow value fade as we move back in space. And it's catching that side plane of the leg. Now. And the patella and the front of the leg. We'll just bring the value down just a little because it's moving more vertically. Okay, and now we bring that foot out just like that. And let's catch that shape of that tail. We've got the underside, right? Look at that, and the hair at the tip. Okay. Look at that, there's your tiger. Coming back here to emphasize a little bit more depth in the eye, putting a little more depth in there. I don't want to kill the thing, the drawing, and make it flat, so we're going to move gingerly through it. Okay, now I'm going to work on the uh, mouth interior real quick here, not too much. Don't want to clutter it up, just the suggestion that there's a tongue in there. No. And some whiskers. Okay, come back in. Soften the mouth interior just a bit. Grab it, water. Grab some water off of there. Just enough, just to give us a little depth in there. All right, and there you have your quick gesture in ink wash using your brush pen and your water pen. Thanks for joining me. Leave your comments, subscribe if you like, and uh, we'll have plenty more coming your way. Take care. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye for now.